our round two is just about to start and I am really curious if we are going to see the different Gate Guardian monsters combined. I'm... That would be... <laughs> oh, what a pun there. But... We, we should need, need a little pun counter. For Leo oh, no, no, the we, we couldn't count. No, we I'm, don't want I'm to encourage it up this event. <laughs> oh. oh, and we're seeing the live twin sprite version again. So after this being not very popular, uh, like before the latest update of the Forbidden and Limited list, this deck is, has become has become really really popular. This time we're not going to see the runic engine in though in it though, uh, contrary to round number one. Yeah, so we, we didn't mention Jake's deck because you know how can you <laughs> when the other person's playing Gay Guardian? Absolutely, but yeah. he is on the sprite live twin strategy so yeah. it's kind of very similar to what we saw in the last round apart from rather than running the runic cards you're running different choice of some you know extra probably sprite cards and then maybe some extra cards to complement that like the, the traditional tech cards we're seeing book of moon infinite impermanence hand traps these sorts of things absolutely yeah Jake and is immediately revealing almost his entire hand by summoning out red uh, normal summoning the kissing and then special summoning the blue after I do think no, I think this is the correct line to go. Yeah, you like it? it? You approve? <laughs> yeah, I was I thinking right. that maybe you summon the red after you try to use the gigantic, but I think it's alright like that. Look, we have red and carrot now, so both of those are going to be part of our end board, which is really strong because it already trades with one monster effect and also a spell card from our opponent. And it means you it gives you insurance when you're doing this whatever you want to do on the first turn, right? Because you can negate things on this turn, yeah. you can negate things that you know, You're probably even happy if your opponent is trying to interact with yeah. you now on this turn because that means you can negate now and you can also negate on the upcoming turn. That means you're already trading with two cards, which is better than one, of course. Are we going to see a lot of hand traps in the deck of Kevin? Because he's running a lot of Gate Guardian cards. Oh, I don't yeah, know if surely he has the space. not. <laughs> not really. The usual approach with those decks that take a lot of space for your engine is to just have some powerful board breaking cards in yeah. their deck to uh, justify having a couple of cards going second. And he's going with that approach as well. Uh, we see he's on Evenly Matched, he's on Book of Eclipse and Book of Moon. Honestly, those cards are really good versus Kashira, but I don't know whether they're super powerful in this matchup here necessarily. Especially yeah. the Book of Eclipse. Mm. Well, Book of Eclipse still threatens the carrot and the red. Yeah. Obviously, yeah, you can't true. use them once they're face down, but I agree. You'd much, you know, Book of Eclipse, when your opponent's got Link monsters in play, feels a bit worse you because just, obviously you can't set those. You just need a combination of the cards, right? Exactly. You need to have Book of Eclipse pulse evenly, and then you are free to out the board because with three oh, set cards and three evenly, set cards is really a very scary board. So let's see what Kevin can bring us. Let's hope that we're already seeing some Gate Guardian cards being summoned here in game number one. <laughs> Geo getting that. Yeah. Evenly matched. I'm manifesting it. Yeah. <laughs> you really want to see it. He could just have two evenly matched. Yeah, yeah that course. happens quite a lot. Every time I have one answer to evenly, I'm getting double evenly. It's a rule at this point. Well, you need to have two oh, answers. Oh, but there's not evenly. going to be oh. evenly matched because there's <laughs> a field spell being activated, and that pretty much rules out evenly matched. Do you, do you think Jake has like a, a sneaking suspicion that he was going to be facing something a bit weird because it's a round two feature match? He's running a, a reasonably yeah. well represented yeah, yeah. deck, so. You know, and he's not playing someone that he might have heard of before. Which it is usually will be, be a in very interesting deck. So now deck you for kind sure. of know you're going to be in a very interesting. But this deck. is Labyrinth Wall Shadow, which Labyrinth is Wall Shadow. the field spell, which also just released in um, Maze, of, Maze of, Memories. of Memories, and it's going to let it's him. Pretty cool. Oh, it's not let we him do are anything. negating. Wait, why doing? would we put the carrot to the graveyard? Yeah, I think <laughs> it was just tapping the carrot. Easy, like yeah. you know, you're probably quite nervous in the feature match, so course, accidentally put something in the wrong place. So, oh, and that's perfect yeah. for Kevin because he just has another copy of Labyrinth Walled Shadow. And that can be activated multiple times per turn, so. Yeah, I was just really double checking it myself, actually, as to whether you can use it. But this is a card that you can use multiple times per turn. A lot of field spells now, you can only use the, uh, like as many copies as you have. You can only use once per turn. Yeah, but not with this Gate Guardian field spell. And Carrot, in particular, says it negates the effect and not the activation. So if indeed, the card says indeed. it can only be activated once per turn, then Kara would not let you activate a second copy. So look at that! Suijin hitting the field! That's a one-off in his deck. And I mean, you are only going to play one-off... Oh, I mean, he's playing double Katagen, actually, but only one-off Suijin and Sangal. So Katagen is the good one. Yeah, Kassigen apparently is the good Kassigen one. is a good one. But it's got the least attack points. <laughs> but, I mean, this picture alone makes me happy. There's Suijin in the Spell and Trap Zone, and there's Fusion Deployment. Oh, that makes sense as well. Yeah, I do expect this card from uh, the good old... Despia deck, which we also saw in round number one, but uh, now we see it in Gate Guardians. I do remember you said in, yeah. uh, in round one when you said the first person played Fusion Deployment, 
and you say he must it's be playing obvious Despair. what he's playing, but yeah. no. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that obvious anymore, and there is Cartage in, as we just learned, maybe the best of the uh, Gate well, he's, Guardians. Yeah, he's chosen to run two copies, so you can summon one, you, know, you can summon Gate Guardians combined by banishing all three, yeah. and then there are also ones you can get by banishing two. So if you banish Water and Wind, Ooh, I need it, Book of Moon, but he probably doesn't know this is a fusion deck because fusion summoning yeah. should still work with your set monsters. Yeah, I was going to say, this is again one of those, I mean, you the know, the advantage of playing a deck yeah. that's a bit weird. There is a fusion deployment. <laughs> so. Yeah, he knows it's a fusion deck. <laughs> but, I mean, yeah, that gives it away a little bit, I'm agreeing. And it, uh, to me, it's got to be really spooky seeing this uh, Suijin, is that the name of the card I'm saying, right? The, the Water Gate Guardian. Yeah. Because it's just like, your card just says put it there in the Spell and Trap card zone. And don't do anything. Yeah. <laughs> oh. you, you have to wonder what that's what's that going to do to me later. How is my opponent going to use that card? Look. It's very weird. So and we go with Prisma Effect, revealing Gate Guardians combined again. We're just letting this go. So no, no I think we're negating oh. it. I, yep, we are negating Prisma, it. Prisma again. All right. It is an old card, so I wouldn't remember off the top of my head whether it's a cost to send from your deck or whether you send it as part of the effect. Because it is cost, yeah. It is cost, which but is I'm why he's still got to send Nowadays it has problem solving card text, I mean, and it is a cost. Why did he send the Kazajin? I thought he already has one that is face down on the field. Well, you can summon as many Gate Guardians as you like in a turn. That's fair enough. So maybe he wants to go into the Gate Guardians oh, of we're now going Wind after and Water, I guess. Field spell. I think the Field Spell has already done its job, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm also, like, maybe we had an end of main situation here, and oh. that's why he decided to just use the effect that he could only use in main phase. I, I guess there's nothing else you really need to yeah. destroy because okay. the other monsters, they're just as useful in the graveyard as they are on the field. And I don't know whether I would have run over one of those because, to be honest, now that means next turn they can just summon the other out again, right? Yeah, I mean, but otherwise you just link them away for a trouble summon. Yeah, yeah, also quite a valid point. I'm agreeing. At least if you summon the other part back, you're locked into fiends. Yeah, true. That is a good point. And but, I mean, if, he, if like there's no further progress from Kevin here, he's still has to deal with Sprite Red and Sprite Carrot next turn again. Ooh, and that is his turn there. And this could very well be a new card called Prey of the Jirai Gumo, which I find really cool because Jirai oh, Gumo yeah. is a card I used to play as a kid. <laughs> Did you? <laughs> you could have t I remember he, somebody explaining it to me. It halves your life points. He couldn't summon it. Yeah, I <laughs> was no. going to say, I don't believe that it's the Prey of Jirai Gumo. Prey of the Gumo because... has to be summoned in the same column. Yeah, interesting. So, by my understanding, if he'd wanted to, he could have chosen to summon the Gate Guardian of Wind and Water. But he chose not yeah. to. I might not understand exactly how these cards work correctly. But let's, yeah, let's bring wind it up. Wind and so Water. Wind and Water is only with uh, cards you control. Oh, it's only with... Oh, I see. But he controls. He does so. control a Suijin and a Kazajin, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't say they have to be face up or anything like that? No, 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 like it that. doesn't say that. And normally the way these sort of contact fusion works is you can use face down Yeah, cards. I would absolutely agree on that. There comes starter into Sprite Blue. Maybe Kevin is a newer player and he does not know about the fantastic ability to fusion summon with face down monsters. Yeah, I mean, these are these are some old, you know, confusing new cards and not everyone's using them, so... You might, it's, a, it's quite an old thing to be able to yeah. fusion summon with face down. It doesn't come up very often, but it does and every time there's new fusion cards released. People are people so try and used to it. fusion summon from your graveyard nowadays. Yeah, with you fusion from your grave, around. your deck, your hand. <laughs> and it always happened with Elemental Hero Prisma back in the days. That True. was sending a Gladiator Beast Bestiary. Yeah, yeah, that was classic, and oh. you were supposed to set. We're searching for Gamma Burst, and that is a riding on the wall. I think Jake is going uh, to try to finish this turn here. Yeah, Gamma Burst is a very powerful card. Gives all of your level 2, rank 2, and link 2 monsters 1,400 extra attack. That's a lot of damage so adding up. And we are going for another monster. This might as well be Onibimaru to clear the field. You might go into Gigantic to extend your board. But either way, I think that Jake is going to try to book a ticket to OTK Town here. <laughs> yep, <laughs> I agree. But it That's is Gigantic. Okay. I love that. It is the Gigantic there. <laughs> So what else does he need from his deck? That's an interesting question. He's I got the carrot, really he's got know. the red. Maybe he just wants an extra monster to attack with, and he's just sort of upgrading the attack. Probably. Because there's, I mean, he could summon out a second sprite red as he's playing to, but yeah, okay, that's what he's doing. I mean, <laughs> there we go. fair Why enough, <laughs> if you want to. Still, the effect of sprite red obviously is once per turn, so even if you have two copies, you can only use it once. Yeah. So, what's next, Jake? 
Maybe he also has Smasher set already and just wants to have one card that he can banish. Oh, okay, he's getting rid of one of the reds now by Exceed summoning. Probably now into Vion yep. Bimaru. Yeah, that's what I thought. That's Please a, don't forget that he also has the effect of the Life Twin Kizikil. Yeah. Yep. yep, there we are. He does not forget. That was a, so, a lack of fear for the face down card. I feel like if you can just leave up a negate. And your opponent's no. got one. Like most of the time, it's probably not going to be, you know, it's never going to be a mirror force, is it? Okay, <laughs> but that still <laughs> leads to Kevin picking up his Gate Guardian cards, and Jake wins game number one here with his Life Twin Sprite strategy. You were saying you're never afraid of Mirror Force. However, in Labyrinth <laughs> strategy, sometimes you actually see people running Storming Mirror Force. Oh, wow. Okay. And I mean, he's playing so many old school cards, so maybe he just brought all yeah. of them and, and also brought a Mirror Force, right? <laughs> also, there is a good chance that he has no idea what you're playing Gate Guardians. Yeah, of I course. mean, so we didn't really before this round, so that would absolutely be possible what, for sure. Uh, do you know what to side deck? I mean, that's always the upside mind, of playing those decks, right? There's the, I can see some dimensional barriers in Jake's side deck. Yes. I think they'd be pretty good. I don't think it takes that much to know that he's running fusion monsters, right? Because he's seen fusion deployment, he's seen elemental hero Prisma, which reveals a fusion monster. He is running a really Interesting card, and I don't yeah. think it's the time for it. I mean, it's it's April now, and he's running Santa Claus. <laughs> I can't stop. <laughs> but yeah, he is on Santa Claus, and I think Santa Claus would be a card that comes in here, to be honest, because um, when you are expecting fusion summons to be done by your opponent, usually they are going to end on a fusion monster that is doing something. So just tributing him with Santa Claus seems pretty reasonable. That does? Because you lock yourself into fiends. Oh, yeah, absolutely. That's, That's why it's better than a kaiju smart. in this deck. Yeah, absolutely. I was going to make a kaiju joke, but... Uh... Yeah. Are some of the kaijus fiends? I'm not. Are there any of them fiends? I think there's uh, no oh, kaiju that's fiends. I think that our level like, 7... Ra Radiant is Radiant. a dark. Radiant, Radiant, is, Radiant is definitely is... a dark. Everyone loves it for being dark, so you can yeah, banish yeah. it with the lure of darkness. And but I'm, I'm pretty sure it's not a fiend. I, I need some help with the spelling <laughs> of the card. R-A-D. R-A-D. Ah, I, yeah. Yeah, yeah, there we go. <laughs> it's pretty easy, actually, my friend. But yeah, uh, <laughs> let's look at the rest of the... Ex uh, of it's the not as easy as you would think. Uh, so e evenly matches also in a side deck, and I think uh, Jake would be... It's a fiend. Oh, it, it is, is a fiend, fiend, actually. Interesting. But like, um, the evenly matched usually is a card you side in going second versus anything. It's very yeah. generic, yeah. But the thing is, probably, or maybe Jake doesn't know that this Gate Guardian deck puts up multiple spell trap negates. So I think Evenly Matched is not even that great of a card versus that deck. No. Because in a perfect world, he's going to end on two spell trap negates, right? In a perfect yeah. world. Yeah. Not even. <laughs> he could draw a triple Evenly Matched, of course. That would <laughs> deal with that, obviously. But or, or that's one, a pretty hard one task. Santa Claus. Yeah, but maybe um, uh, Kevin also has some cards to support going first. I see Skill Drain could be coming in here. Skill that's a pretty good interesting card. choice. It'd definitely take me by surprise, because you know, you, I guess. I mean, I, mean, I suppose anything will are take really you by surprise. Big, they right? are big. Yeah. His and monsters they are so big. Have effects that activate in the graveyard if they're destroyed by a card effect yeah. or battle. I, I really like Skill Drain. I honest. really also like Solemn Judgment, to be honest. If you're going first right now, I think that is the. Of course, it's good going first, but I think that's like the perfect addition to side decks because evenly matched is a thing. Okay, you have yeah. a lot of negates, but I think they are mostly only spell trap negates, right? Yeah, yes. The and thing is, and in, in, this, in this deck yeah. specifically, you do have an answer to evenly yeah. matched with your um, exactly. fusion monsters. And therefore, I think skill drain is just a better answer. And you can just negate uh, Dark Ruler with the Solemn Judgment, by the way. But I think that the players are ready, so let's cut our discussion here and go into game two of the round two feature match. So I'm absolutely hoping to see a fusion summon now being performed by the Gate Guardian deck from Kevin. Oh, his whole deck looks like it's built around fusion summoning, so I'm confident we're going to yep. see... I would also yeah. love to see a hero lift into Guardians. Elemental Hero Prisma, just paying yeah. half of your life points, but getting a lot of that, a lot out of it. Oh, but I see Nibiru in the opening hand of Jake, so that could be an issue here. And Effect Veiler. Nibiru plus Effect wow. Veiler is like the combo to end every combo. I mean, honestly, <laughs> like... The anti-combo combo. Exactly. Oh, we see preparation of rights first of all, though. Oh, yeah. I love that, Magician yeah. of Souls in this deck. I think it's really cool. It is. So we go for Illusion of Chaos first, and that would be able to search out the Magician Souls that you were just talking about. Magician of Souls was such a powerful card when it came out in yeah. the Spiral deck, because it allowed you to send a key Spiral it master It was absolutely plan. great. Also, I, I loved it in Prank Kids. There was like that Prank Kids Magician Souls deck, which was really strong as well. And it pulls extra weight in this because you get yeah. to you put your 
uh, Gate Guardian monsters on the field as spells and traps that don't do anything. So yeah. what better to do with them than send them to the graveyard with That's Magician of Souls? Really and also, and extra for the effect of Magician Souls, you could also just send Carthage in or something to the graveyard because it just needs to be a spellcaster, right? Yes, so exactly. That's really strong, it, ju yeah. it just seems to do absolutely yeah. everything. It seems deck. to be a Gate Guardian card, to be <laughs> honest. <laughs> Gate Guardian Magician. But fortunately, it's also a Dark Magician card, which is why you can set it. Yeah, true. With the Illusion of Chaos. But I, I really like that from Jake's deck. We, we talked about it. He doesn't play the Runic Engine, but that allows him to play more hand interactions. And uh, therefore, we see the upside of it here by him opening up multiple of that so he can just interrupt his opponent very easily. I'm interested. I don't, I don't know there's too much to hit with Effect Valor in this deck, but I don't actually know. <laughs> I mean, you can hit the Prisma. You oh. can also hit this one. You I mean, it depends on how many cards he is discarding here, right? I think they are just clarifying that Magician Souls could send Carthage into the graveyard, which is absolutely <laughs> yeah. the case. It's probably not something you'd expect. Uh, oh, before. we are uh, dis we are discarding the prosperity and we are drawing. Yeah, I wouldn't have I would have not veiled that either. I think. Do you think this means he's got a second prosperity in his hand? Yeah, but then he can't activate it because he drew a card. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, okay. Because he, he tries yeah, no, to draw a card, so prosperity doesn't do anything anymore. But would you prefer to like? Surely you'd prefer to activate the prosperity and choose one of six. Nah. Then just draw the top one. <laughs> No. Um, uh, yeah, no, you're Heavily right. disagreeing on it. Yeah. <laughs> this, this, this adds a little bit of flavor to it, I think. <laughs> oh, and now we finally Ooh, yes. see the first fusion summon Guardian. of the Gate Guardian deck, and there's also oh. a Sui Jin, so it will be Gate Guardians combined hitting the field here, all three of them. And it is being looked up by Jake now as well, and Kevin is having a smile on his face, <laughs> yep. I am the Gate Guardian player in this tournament. Here you can have my Jake Gate Guardians combined. needs to have a good read of this card, as yes. we probably all do, because it's a card you've not seen before. It's got quite a lot of text, so you oh, need yeah. to check that you're not just going to do something silly. So this one in particular says three times per turn <laughs> you can negate a card which targets, uh, negate an effect or a card which targets one of the cards that you have on the field. And yeah. now Valor is not that good anymore. Exactly, Valor's gone. Oh, but there's only and Nick Ruben two well. sets. <laughs> True, we didn't even summon five times. That's strong. But I mean, you can just play, right? Yeah. At this point, there's... I uh, mean, you, you know what card is really good versus Gate Guardians combined? Sprite Smashers, because oh, that yeah. card does not target. I was going to say I Santa think, Claus. I think I saw <laughs> that in his opening hand, to be honest. Or evenly yeah. matched. <laughs> so, uh, but we are right now just starting it off with one of our Life Twin cards. Lila. And, starting oh. it off with Lila. and there is a skill drain we were talking about. This, Holy moly. This is a strategy since the dawn of Yu-Gi-Oh, I think. Yeah. Yes. You, you play a big monster, <laughs> and then you play a skill drain. Oh, but look at that. OK, I thought we have a direct response that to the skill home? drain. That is Life Twin Home indeed. That is actually crazy. It's yeah, quite an unpopular Life Twin card, right? It is indeed, yeah. You, you discard one to special summon one. But then you are uh, Evil Twin locked in the extra deck. Like Evil Twins or just Fiends? Evil Twins. Oh, wow. Okay, that's very restrictive. I thought I, I considered playing this card because I was playing the Searcher for the Life Twin spells as well. So I could play it as a one off if I get interrupted really heavily. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But and that's what he's doing exactly. He's playing it yeah. as a one off. I think maybe the plan here is just to somehow try to climb up into yeah. uh, Troubled Sunny. And Troubled Sunny could be an. Oh, but ah, we yeah. instantly. Use Book of Moon on the Frost that was summoned there. And the Book of Moon was, in fact, a good read, because if you already invest two cards in a Life Twin Home, then uh, you see what I did there with a book and a good read? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> need an intervention for these puns at some point. <laughs> it's only the second round, guys. It's going to get much worse. Oh, no. Was it? He's gone oh, to the battle phase. Oh, he's going to the oh, battle no. phase. That's looking good for Kevin. Am that skill drain right stopped him in his tracks. In thinking that you could have used the the field spell to destroy True. the live twin. Maybe he, he forgot just... about the additional effect of his field spell. You're absolutely Maybe right. Maybe he'd just rather that his opponent had a monster in attack mode so you can just punch it for a ton of damage with Labyrinth, uh, with his big gate guardian monster. So, <laughs> look, Jake is also rereading it and then probably realizes with last sentence, yeah, it actually says you can, uh, at the start of the opponent's battle, oh no, it's only your oh no, it's of your opponent's battle phase. That would have absolutely been the case I think it was the start of your battle phase, I think it would be even stronger. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Oh, oh, and look at that card. That is Shadow Ghoul of the Labyrinth. Another new card from updated the... Updated Wall Shadow. Maze of Memories. And it is being mad by Ash Blossom there from Jake. Does it have an effect in the graveyard as well? Yes, it does. Yeah, you can banish this card from your graveyard uh, to destroy 
Uh, at the start of the demo oh, yeah, stage, if your opponent's monster step. battles while you control a Labyrinth Wall card, you can fetch this card from your GY, destroy that opponent's oh, monster. Oh, that's really helpful, because he's got the field spell, so... Yeah. That's, unless Jake goes out of his way to clear the field spell now, that's one sort of Sakuretsu armor kind of effect. Yeah, I mean, there are more and more traps coming out of this uh, Labyrinth deck, right? That's what a <laughs> Labyrinth is known for, like having a lot of twists, and that is definitely the case here. So do you think Jake, even if Jake has an answer for the skill drain in the form of Sprite Smashers, then how do you answer the Gate Guardians combined? Yeah, that is true. And also, we have to get Sprite cards somehow first to resolve these Sprite Smashers. Yeah, you can't just search it so easily when there's a yeah. skill drain in play. Indeed. That does have to go in attack mode, I think. Oh, no. Yeah, that <laughs> would be the case. That's how Yu-Gi-Oh works. Yeah. Flip some of my monster into face-up defense position. Oh, and... Is that the Sprite Smashers? Yeah, yes, it is. I think he you can banish from hand. Yeah, and he might have discarded something for life from home earlier. Yeah. I think he discarded the Bureau, so that was not. Yeah, all right. No, no that no, is no, not no, how no, Sprite no, no, Smashers no, 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 works. No, 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 no. Okay, yeah. he does yeah, not yeah. even have a Sprite card, sadly. So that Sprite Smashers cannot be activated here. So he had one half of the Smashers. Oh look, and he had, but he has Santa Claus. Ho, he does ho, have ho. the Santa oh, Claus. Oh no! But uh, how much attack does Santa Claus have? One five, I think. And, I, I can't imagine there's another reason one, two. to play oh, Santa Claus other than oh, the fact that it's two. quite small. Oh, you can... But oh, in yes. this case, it's still bigger yeah. <laughs> than Live Twins. But that's that's the only advantage I can see of running Santa Claus over the Kaiju. Gate Guardian combined has a grave effect, and now we are scooping Gate Guardians <laughs> control their way into Game 3 wow. while flipping Skill Drain. Yeah, the skill indeed was very much drained here in Game Number 2, and the Gate Guardian strategy comes out on top here to give us a Game 3 here in our Round 2 featured match. That's amazing, I love that. That was... That was great to see. Yeah. Gate Guardians. It's, it's a take on it. You know, you don't just have to play the Gate Guardian cards. You can play Elemental Heroes with yeah. Prisma. You can play Dark Magicians with Magician. It's really Magician cool. Soul, and you can play Skill Drain. It's a combination of so many old decks, so many yeah. old archetypes. We have a Hero Lifts in there. We have Magician Souls, as you said, in there. And then, of course, also the <laughs> almighty Gate Guardians as well. And I think this is something we can see quite a lot of this weekend. We're seeing like lots of little engines, maybe because in the in the last round we yeah. had Runic, Sprite, yeah. and Live Twins all yeah. in the same deck, and then there's this little engine of the Adventurer package, which we can sure. see being splashed into basically everything. So it's very cool to see like lots of different engines being together, and in the branded deck, it's kind of an, an accumulation of like three or four different. This the deck, archetypes. the Gate Guardians would make good use of the Adventure Package, right? I haven't seen like a really important Normal, normal Summon. summon. Of course, really. you have the Prisma, but you don't really always want a Normal Summon. You have a Hero Lives. You have a Hero Lives, yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I mean that's actually fine. But what it I'm works. asking myself is, can Gate Guardian break a bigger board? Because we have seen in Game 1, that, that was a really tough one. It was a standard Sprite board. Yeah. And I don't see that many ways to break boards with the deck. Maybe yeah, the, the problem is, is in-engine in it's already yeah. hard, for sure. And then, like, he, he's relying on Book of Eclipse, Book of Moon, and Evenly Match in his main deck already. And from his side deck, there's not much more support coming in, I can tell you. He's upping the number of Evenly Matched to three, and he's also upping the number of Book of Eclipse and Book of Moon to three, because he's only playing two of each in the main deck. And then there's also Triple Ash Blossom and Joy Spring. And Leo, you are an expert of the Life Trend Sprite deck. What do you think about Ash Blossom and Joy Spring versus that deck specifically? No. It's, it's not that great, right? right? <laughs> I mean, in one word. <laughs> I mean, there are applications for it. Sometimes you have weird hands. Yeah. I mean, if you're normal summoning Leela yep. and you get Ash Blossom, you have no way of continuing to play. Of course, Ash Blossom is good. Ash yeah. Blossom always has the potential, if you throw it at the first thing, to win, the t to win the game, possibly, because you end the turn. But there's also there's, the very yeah. likely scenario that it just doesn't I stop mean, him. I mean, he is even running double secret password. I think he's running yeah. double or triple Sunny Snitch, so you yep. can always even search for the Kizikil Frost. So there's a lot of stuff you can do. You can negate the Gigantic, but then if there is a Jet Hard Draw or a Blue, then it doesn't matter again. But the players are ready for Game 3, so let's take it over to the feature bench table. just about to start. We are seeing the fist bump of friendship and now we're going to draw our opening hands of five with a Jake starting with a ooh, not that good hand. Absolutely not. He only has Sprite Jet as monsters. Is that a Harpy's Feather Duster? I think so. That's quite a curious card to have when you Look know Look at that. Jake starts first. by setting free and not 
bringing any monsters onto his board, which is usually what you want to do with this deck. I, I can really understand the Harpy's Feather Duster, though, because the board that Jake will put up doesn't really do well versus just set skill rain pass. <laughs> <laughs> well, you do have the carrot, but just the yeah, carrot. Yeah, you usually do. Oh, boy. Jake is not happy with that. And Kevin now activating Illusion of Chaos from his hand, so he will get more draw power going by searching for Magician Souls here. The Magician of Souls just seems like a very, very powerful start, right? Just for no real investment, you get a Gate Guardian in your graveyard, and then you can filter your draws to find whatever else you need. Yeah, Gate Guardian Magician Souls really a good card, for sure. <laughs> I mean, it has proven <laughs> itself in the past. It definitely has, yeah. So, are we, yeah, we're instantly starting with that. Why not? Let's get the first... Gate guard into the graveyard. It is Carsagin. So, like, somehow it's always Carsagin, right? That must be why he's playing, yeah, too. It's a like, spellcaster. Yeah, probably. Oh, you said the only spellcaster of that? Yeah, the other uh, ones are Aqua and Thunder. Oh, oh okay. that's why he's playing, too. I see. Yeah, then it you makes absolute are sense. Truly the Gate Guardian expert. Thank you. I've looked it up earlier. Because I, <laughs> but then I was looking it up so much, I thought that you maybe have said it already, so I didn't want to just uh, add no, it again. No, I didn't there comes huge that. deployment already. Oh, that card is so good in there. Indeed, can we are any again. Of your small gate guardian monsters. Small is a small? little bit of an wow. understatement. There's sewage incoming, and not small, gonna lie, relative. that's 2,500 <laughs> attack points. That's a lot for a sprite. <laughs> Indeed, sprite, yeah. sprite is going to have a tough time handling this. Sprite monsters, I would say, are big for level twos. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Oh, oh and on the summon of sewage <laughs> I think we're yeah we're thinking about Book of Mooning that again, and Kevin should be fine with that once more because, as far as we understand it, he is supposed to be able to contact Fuse with those set monsters, but right? Does he know? <laughs> oh, but there again comes the Shadow Ghoul of the Labyrinth. Last time it was Ash, but this time we see it resolving. I, I want to see a, a tribute summon of Sangra of the Thunder or something. That would be so oh, yes. <laughs> but I don't think he will need it because he now gets access to the field spell. Labyrinth Wall Shadow has been and searched. I really love this synergy because you, you activate the field spell, then you put a Gate Guardian in your spell and trap card zone, and that in itself gives you two cards to send. The Magician Souls. That is so yeah. good indeed. Oh, but yeah. Whilst putting something in your graveyard that you really want. Amazing, for sure. And he's still not used his normal summon. Yeah. See, that's why you could play the adventure. <laughs> <package>. <laughs> but he puts another Cassigen into this bounty. He also. really likes his Cassigen. Yeah. He, he just likes it the most. Maybe he has Sangra of the Thunder in his hand because he's only running the four yeah. Gate Guardians. Yeah. So this would be all four. Yeah. Indeed, it would be. Are we going to see a possible draw to. Oh, oh, and oh, that is, it, that it is, is a tribute, tribute summon. Oh, but what not for Sangha the Sun. It's a Labyrinth Heavy Tank. It is Labyrinth Heavy, heavy Tank indeed. Tank? It's super rare from Mace of Memory. And it is being uh. tribute summoned right there. And Kevin is explaining what it is about to do. This is madness happening here in round two of YC's London. <laughs> so so that, actually, actually, a Labyrinth card. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> who would have thought? Uh, it's, not, it's with an I and not a Y, yeah, unfortunately. I yeah. And Before there comes the contact ideas. fusion with all three of them. All three are now in the graveyard. And therefore, we get Gate Guardians oh. combined onto the field. And this is looking really good. First of all, the Heavy Tank looks like one of my favorite classical cards from the era of Paradox Brothers. It's Labyrinth Tank, right? I think it yeah, might I think be so. yeah. Dr Drillroid. It looks oh, very similar drill. to Drillroid as well, <laughs> let's be honest. No, there was an old, like, uh, ritual monster, like oh yeah, the, true. I remember that one. Level well. seven. Oh, so there comes the. Oh, oh see, this it again. Can be it can be negated. You've got three once per turn negations. So what's the uh, other bank? In the row? same chain. Oh. Moon. Is it? Is it once per chain? It it's doesn't read not. it. He's oh wow! He's just using it again. Kevin is negating infinite impermanence and Book of Moon right there. He's knocking off Jake socks with the Brothers Paradox. <laughs> What You've a been working we on there. your rhyme. And look, we have another wow. Wow. summon from water? the Spell and Trap Zone. Is that 8,000 damage? The heavy tank play? can't attack the turn it was summoned. I think. <laughs> <laughs> but there oh, is the okay. this bomb. This wow. is indeed game. And therefore, we have Gate Guardians taking round number two here of yeah. YC is London 2023. Oh, you have heard right, it's 2023. <laughs> Gate Guardians are winning featured matches. What's going on here? Oh, what a game. And we really fantastic. got to see the power of Gate Guardians yeah, combined, yeah. negating two targeting spells and traps in one turn. The power of friendship lets you yeah. negate so <laughs> many targeting effects. It's absolutely insane. Uh, that was really strong. I mean, unfortunate start, of course, for his opponent there in game three. Jake really just setting free cards. Ah. Also, free cards that would only target opponent's monsters and therefore could be negated by Gate Guardians combined. But, I mean, let's not take away the glory there from Kevin. It, having it got to show off the power of it, didn't it? 
And again, like if you're running a deck where other people don't know what it does, you don't necessarily know that you need these cards are not going to be yeah. very helpful. Like Book of Moon against the Fusion deck where you can still fuse or Tribute Summon both of you. We <laughs> saw a Tribute Summon of just like the monster has the effect. It, you can just normal summon it. You can it. just normal but summon it. But I think that no. he <laughs> doesn't know about the uh, face down fusion summoning. So he just thought, I gotta get rid of my Sujin. So bang. <laughs> Beautiful play. But just slamming him right there. For me, it's very obvious that we already have one Top Gun contender now. Oh, definitely. I, I, I think we have a winner. Yeah. yeah, maybe even that, at least for the best deck in the room, because it is very, very clearly one of the OG favorite decks from a lot of people as well. A lot of people were anticipating the new support for the Gate Guardian deck because the archetype was so beloved by many people. And as you could just see, it is actually capable of competing in nowadays meta game. But let's hear it from the man himself. Let's hear it from Kevin at what does our winner Kevin Piganier has to say with his Labyrinth deck. Oh, uh, no, Lab. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Basti. Yes, I'm joined with our Gate Guardian winner, Kevin Panjanet, right here. Congratulations. Now, we were all very excited to see, well, A, the Gate Guardian deck, but B, see the Gate Guardian deck win. So talk to us a bit. It's obviously had the support recently. Talk to us about why you like Gate Guardian as a deck. Um, it's a really old archetype and Konami decided to make really good support for it. And I was like, you know, this game can be wild. So I would decide to just play for fun and to make people happy by playing it. And when people see these cards, they're always like, oh, why is this? And they realize this is an old Guardian deck. So I was like, it has potential. I worked for weeks on it and then he paid off, really. It really did. And the commentators were saying throughout that match, something quite exciting about it is you can actually pair that deck with quite a few different archetypes to make it work. So do you want to talk to us a bit about how you went about doing that and building the deck with the synergy? Yeah. So um, I thought about the Eldish variant, which was, in my opinion, not the most effective one. Um, and then, obviously, we have Machine Souls for Kazajin. We have Prisma for Hero Live. And then I'm not playing everything by free, for example, like the Wall Shadow. So I try to have hands with no multiple copy of cards, which means that I will always have a playable hand because you're playing bricks technically with the big pieces. So I, you know, I work and work to get something really narrowed down to something that worked every time and I adapted to the meta as I'm playing anti-meta like cards to go second because this meta game is hard at the minute. So I try to adapt to it and I was like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's, it's also worked out very well for you taking that second round. So let's go through some of the play-by-plays in each of the games. So in game one, you had the Labyrinth Wall Shadow negated, but you had a second one in hand, so you managed to get that out. So apparently there was some confusion that you didn't fuse with face-down monsters, which kind of set Jake to take game one. So do you want to talk to us a bit about that? I forgot about it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it happens. There's the pressure of being up there on stage. And I was like... And I was like, to be honest, he was already ahead in terms of uh, his ceiling was so high that I couldn't come back to it. And I played two Prisma main deck and I drew both and a hero leave. So I was like, the deck doesn't want to play, <laughs> basically. Which is why it was, I was like, to be honest, he's already higher in the ceiling than, than me. So I was like, let's not go. He had three face down, he had five in hand. It was like, no point of me just trying to push too much. So yeah, that's why. Okay, so then you just decided, you know what, let's just get into game two. And then game two was decisive because you got our Gate Guardian combined, the first time we've ever seen that in a YCS. So that was very exciting. And then on top of that, you put straight down that skill drain. So you just controlled that game two straight away. So talk to us about the thought process because I'm guessing when you get Gate Guardian controlled out, it's got 3,750 attack but it's also got the three negates. Yes. But with skill drain, you can't use the negates. Were you just putting it there as a dominant field presence? Yeah, so most of the decks in the meta, they can't get over a big piece like this. With the effect monsters, only a few decks can do it. And if I take like, you know, Lava Golem, Kaiju, they all float. And that's why I played a deck in this specific meta because all of the cards are played everywhere. And I was like, if they, if they float, so I can, you know, I can come back basically. I knew, I knew a specific deck with no monster effect. If he doesn't have the smasher and he has to spend the entire hand to be able to banish my monster, which is going to summon another one, I'm going to have enough attack points to just push for game anyway. So that's why I did it. Okay, fantastic. And then obviously we got straight into game three. A difficult start for Jake where there was a three set and then a pass. That's always a nervous moment for a player. But I'm guessing you probably felt quite confident in that moment. You then managed to, you had the Shadow Ghoul resolve, which meant you got the field spell out, which was the first time we got to see that resolve throughout that. And then you negated both the Imperm and the Book of Moon with Gate Guardian combined again. So talk to us about that third game going into the win. Um, I was not expecting 
two face downs and I saw my book of Eclipse and I was like, that's a bit useless now. So, and then I thought, if I tried to discard it with Magician Souls, I'd be like, something's gonna happen. And then I realized, well, I just need to tribute some of my tank to just bay the face down and I finished basically. <laughs> it was crazy, it was great. And the commentators were going absolutely nuts for it. They were so happy. That was so exciting. Thank you for giving us such a brilliant display of gate guardianship as we went into this. That was congratulations on getting that second round and best of luck with the rest of your Swiss rounds. Hopefully we'll see more gate guardian in the top cut. We never know, but well done again. Guys, please don't go anywhere.